Bangladesh is one of the world's largest suppliers of shrimp, primarily for restaurants and supermarkets in Europe and the US. The trade employed some 750,000 people, generating crucial revenue for the impoverished country. But the industry is dogged with allegations of bonded labor, gang-related activity and misappropriation of land. I'm Fauzia Ibrahim. On this edition of 101 East, we look at Bangladesh's shrimp farming industry and ask just how can things improve for those working at the bottom of the food chain? Welcome to Kulna, Bangladesh's third largest city. It's a dusty, somewhat unremarkable place with one main claim to fame. This is also known as the city of shrimps, the center of a trade that's as lucrative as it is controversial. A trade that's triggered intense debate and sparked a violent battle over resources. On one side, there are businessmen like actor Hussein Panna, who want to develop the industry. <laughs> His opponents are grieved peasants, laborers, environmentalists, and human rights activists. They are destroying our environment, our livelihood, our land, and poor people are losing their job. For Bangladesh, the stakes are high. Shrimp was the country's third biggest export earner in 2010, bringing in some 350 million US dollars money the impoverished country desperately needs. Yet pressure on the government to regulate, if not restrict, shrimp aquaculture continues. To find out why, we journey into the heart of the countryside surrounding Kulna, where we discover an industry plagued by violence, illegal land grabs, and questionable environmental practices. Maishal Azam is an activist working with land rights group Najira Kori. Today, he's going to visit some people affected by shrimp cultivation. Out on the riverbank, the landscape is a patchwork of ponds. It's a far cry from just two decades ago, when this area consisted mainly of paddy fields. Our first stop, the village of Redenagun. We're here to see 85-year-old Amula Sakar. Amula's situation is dire. This former school teacher once owned 14 acres of farmland. But he now lives in this tiny shack. All this used to belong to our mullah. He says he was driven out of his land by thugs hired by businessmen who wanted to use it for shrimp cultivation. In 2007, Amula took the case to court and won. But despite the verdict, he's not been able to reclaim possession of his land. These documents are all he has to show for his efforts. That was when Amula ran out of money and couldn't pursue the case any further. To make matters worse, the tax man came calling demanding that he pay back taxes for the land he can no longer use. 
It's a nightmarish situation. Amula's family now lives off the charity of its neighbours. His daughter-in-law, Momota, can barely scrape together three meals a day. A short distance from Amula's house, acres and acres of waterlogged fields. Shrimp cultivators have flooded the area with salt water, rearing shellfish even as villagers attempt to grow paddy. Increased salinity means all this land will eventually become unsuitable for agriculture. Nearby, Mohammed Bilal Ghazi is hard at work. His family owns about two acres of land. Nearly all of it has been leased out to shrimp cultivators. Twice a year, they receive rent or hari money of about 50 US dollars. To make ends meet, the family has had to turn to aquaculture, digging two small ponds on what little land they have left. Ghazi says there's not much else they can do. Zail Hok Mukhtar has been studying the impact of shrimp aquaculture on the environment and on farming communities. Salinity is causing a harm to people's lives and livelihoods, especially, you know, the, now the ecology and biodiversity uh, are destroyed almost uh, fully. And we should say that uh, as a result of that, people are not in a position to practice their traditional livelihoods. Ironically, a primary means of introducing salt water into the land is through canals built by the government. Constructed in the 1960s as part of a coastal embankment project backed by the World Bank, they were meant to serve two main purposes. To encourage agriculture by keeping out saline water and to protect communities from floods. By the 80s, the coastal embankment project uh, has been failed. So nowadays you will find that in many areas the embankments, the sluice gates, are being grabbed and controlled by the local powerful elites who are engaged in shrimp cultivation. They are making uh, holes within the embankments and as a result these embankments are being affected. These are being weakened day by day. The impact of such activities was felt in May 2009 when Cyclone Isla hit southwest Bangladesh. More than two million people were affected. Environmentalists say much of the suffering could have been prevented had the embankments not been so severely damaged. Throughout our investigation, one name keeps coming up. Wazid Ali Biswas has been accused of some of Kulma's worst crimes. The most infamous incident took place here in 1990 during a demonstration against shrimp cultivation.
Karuna Moyasada died that day. It would take 17 years before a court handed down life sentences to 12 perpetrators. Wazid, though, passed away long before the verdict. Despite numerous attempts, were unable to contact his son for comment. The tragedy helped galvanize these villagers. Processions like this one are a reminder of the price they paid for resisting. For the villagers, Karuna's sacrifice wasn't in vain. For the past two decades, they've managed to keep shrimp cultivators off their land. Unlike other areas along the riverbank, it's lush and green here. Elsewhere in Kulna, others are also starting to fight back. Prabash Roy and his fellow villagers decided they'd had enough three years ago. Increased salinity was destroying their land. Their solution was simple. They closed this sluice gate. It's an act of defiance that pits them against those who need to let in salt water from the river in order to farm shrimp. This game of cat and mouse can sometimes result in violence. Roy says he was recently beaten up by men sent by shrimp cultivators. Few Bangladeshis get to eat the shrimp they cultivate. Virtually all of it will be sold to a middleman, who will then send it to a seafood depot like this one. Business is brisk and the bidding intense. A kilogram of shrimp can go for anything between $1.50 to $30. US dollars. Nearly everything here will eventually end up in Europe and the United States, where they are sold for many times more the price. It's all part of a global industry worth some $9 billion a year. Bangladesh currently commands just 7% of that trade. For some, that spells opportunity. Biden market, I mean, Europe, America, the Dekesi, Ching read Puchu demand. Amra Tadar Chahidonu de supply Akno de Padina. Amadej Utpadon Sheta Kubi Shamano. Actor Hussein Pana has invited us to visit his farm today. He knows we've been investigating allegations of abuse in the shrimp industry and wants to show us things from his perspective. The ponds are empty this time of year. Dozens of workers are busy cleaning them out ahead of a new season. I'm not sure if I'm going to develop a new season. 
নতুন করে পাঁচ দশ লক্ষ লোকের কর্মসংস্থান হবে এটা একটা বিষয় আছে এই চিংড়ি চাষের সাথে যারা আছে বর্তমানে তাদের আর্থিক অবস্থার অনেক পরিবর্তন আসছে অনেক গরিব মানুষ যারা পুয়োর ম্যান ছিল Shah Ahad works as a technical officer at the farm. He says he's grateful for the job and the opportunities it provides. Chingdi culture is very good for Bangladesh. I have been working here for two years. I have been working here for a long time. I have been working here for Bangladesh Krishi Vishwadal and I have been working here for a long time. तो शेष उत्तर धरे ही एक है ना आशा सीपी बांग्लादेश कंपनी जो हम तादर सर्कुलर दिसे शेष सर्कुलर में आते हैं हमें एप्लीकेशन करार पड़ा तारा हमारे एक है ना न्यूज़ दिसे एक्टिविस्ट्स तो से आहाद स्टोरी इसन टिपिकल अनलाइक दिस विलेजेस ही इस अ हाईली एजुकेटेड आउटसाइडर द पीपल हु यूज्ड in a shrimp farm, for every 10 persons employed per area, that same area for agriculture would employ 100 people. Before we leave, Pana tries to reassure us that his farming methods won't affect nearby agricultural land. We started ये जो डाइक गुलास है, ये डाइक के मिडिले पॉलिथिन होते हैं। इसके अंदर के कोनो पानी लीक करे बैरे जावे ना कोनो पानी लीक करे बैरे आज बना। जगह ने कोनो पानी लीक करे ना। तो आमदर ये जो पासे पेड़ी लैंड धान है, इसका ने प्रोचुर धान है जो मिलते हैं। Soothing words, but surveying the area a little later, there's not a single paddy field in sight. We're at Organic Shrimp Export Limited, one of several dozen processing plants in Kulna. Here, shrimp are cleaned, trimmed and packaged for Western consumption. General Manager Zala Uddin Ahmed has worked here for the past 18 years. These jumbo shrimp are bound for the United States. Zalauddin says his margins are slim. Organic sells them for six dollars seventy-five US a pound, or roughly fifteen US dollars a kilogram. He says they were bought in an auction for ten US dollars a kilogram. It all looks above board and uncontroversial. But then, a few days after our visit, we meet Sunob Molik. Molik is a former machine operator at Organic Shrimp. His wife, Cole Mona, worked at a neighboring plant. <laughs> They both lost their jobs recently. The couple says they were fired not because of their performance at work, but because they decided to form a trade union following a training session conducted by an NGO. Shonse amader matri kalo nje suti pai amra bascha hawar shoma shei suti. Tapore amader ata orjito suti ase bossore bai jen shei shob suti shompor ke amader age kono dharona silo na amra zanta na. Ei shob bishay tapore amader duty je eight ghanta silo. Some of the other things the Mollicks were pushing for, better working hours, overtime pay, and proper enforcement of the minimum wage, which currently stands at just under $40 a month. Indian Koreshima Yamashwange Sarasari Birodita Kare Factory Manager, FM. Bol se tumi trade union karo, ame tuma trade union e Birodita kare. Tan bol se trade union kara asma me ke rodi kare. Mollick says shortly after forming the union, he was transferred to a new department, then locked out of the factory before finally being told to leave. We ask Organic's general manager if the allegations are true. 
এটা সম্পূর্ণ বাংলা এবং মিথ্যা এটা যদি তাই হতো তাহলে তো এখনো ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন থাকতো না আমাদের এখনো আমাদের দুইটা কোম্পানি দুইটা কোম্পানি এখনো স্টিল ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন আছে এবং ট্রেড ইউনিয়ন চলতেছে এবং তাদের কার্যক্রম সুষ্ঠুভাবে চলতেছে Lawyer Firoz Ahmed regularly represents strip workers involved in labor disputes. He tells us the situation regarding trade unions is more complex than it appears. There is no one trade union of these factories. Every factory one trade union. So it is it is very tough to face the owners in the union sector. <laughs> The Molik saw an opportunity for change and attempted to organize a union involving workers from different plants. The aim to strengthen their collective bargaining powers. But the plan backfired. They're now mulling their next move. Our investigation has thrown up as many questions as answers. Attempts to reach the government for comment prove futile. The fisheries department agrees to an interview, but then cancels at the last minute. Lawyer and policy expert Adilur Rahman Khan says the government has much to answer for. There is no comprehensive uh, shame policy for Bangladesh, although there is a kind of draft for policy of 2009, but this draft policy is you know, kind of does not protect the rights of the people. It's more like the people who are the owners of these factories or the people who have taken lease of the land or the exporters, it favors them. On our second last day in Kulna, we're reminded of the kind of influence the shrimp industry wields. We've arranged to interview Michelle Azam, the activist who showed us around when we first arrived. Halfway through our discussion, there's an unexpected interruption. Someone, it seems, is unhappy about our presence here. The sub-district official has sent the police to escort us to his office. We have little choice but to go. The official meets us on the road, halfway to his office. He starts to berate Azam. He let us go soon after, happy to threaten us, but not prepared to explain why. We don't get to shoot much more after this. Word of the visit by the police spreads quickly, and people become more guarded around us. But we've seen and heard enough to understand why some are calling on the government to rethink its shrimp policy. It's only the people at the locality, they can decide that whether they want it to continue or not. It's the question of their right to livelihood. It's the question of their right to health. And it's the question of right to food. They are the people who should decide. It's not the people at the top, at the center, at the capital of the country, through their policy, implement something which is far from the desire of the people. The reasons for change are compelling. But here in Kulna, shrimp is also known as white gold. It's an industry the government is keen to promote. An industry that will continue to divide communities. That's all the time we have for this edition of 101 East. You can always follow the program on our website, podcast and Facebook. From all the team, thanks for watching.